Organic Nursery. And Allie and Fluffy. And Allie and Fluffy. And we're here today to talk to you about how to plant and care for tomatoes organically out here at White Raven Farm. So here in Idaho, most of us are going to be planting tomatoes from a start. That is a plant that was seeded one to two months ago, and that allows us to compensate for our shorter season by having a plant that's already got a couple months on it before we put it into the ground. After we put it into the ground, it starts to catch up with the warmer weather and we're able to harvest a lot sooner. First thing we need to do is dig our hole. Hold that, please. So I'm gonna take my shovel, find the spot that I wanna plant. I'm gonna give them about three to four feet between each plant, and I'm going to dig a fairly deep hole because tomatoes need to be planted deeply. By planting them deeply, it allows them to develop a stronger root system as the little hairs on the side of the tomato will actually become new roots. Once you have your hole prepared, you need to add some fertilizer. Getting it in in the beginning is essential because it will give slow release nutrition to the plant throughout the growing season. This is a great way to, de to prevent deficiencies from the get-go. When you're looking for an organic fertilizer, I definitely recommend you look for something that actually is designed for vegetables and tomatoes. Uh, the reason for this is because they specifically make sure there's calcium in the formulation. The calcium is essential for preventing blossom end rot in both peppers and tomatoes, and that's that sunken and dead spot that you often see um, when plants kind of get to that ripening stage, a lot of times in paste tomatoes. I also add kelp meal. Kelp meal is full of micronutrients and also a very nice uh, transplant shock preventing nutrient called cytokines. It helps the plant to establish better and gives it a little extra kick to make it want to grow. Epsom salts, that's something you can get at your local hardware store or uh, grocery store. I'm going to add just a tablespoon of Epsom salts into the hole to allow us to give a little extra strength to the stem and the sulfur in the Epsom salts will help the plant become greener. Now it's time to grab our plant and give it a prune. Thank you, Allie. So, when you're looking at the tomato, there are these junctions where the stem meets the, uh, the branch. And in that junction, there is a thing called a sucker. That would eventually become its own stem. And if you want to keep your plant tidy and able to be trellised, you want to make sure to remove that. So I'm going to remove the sucker from each one of these spots. So along the stem, you'll see these fine little aerial roots, and these will eventually become roots in the ground once we bury this plant deeply. Because we're gonna bury it deep, I'm going to remove these branches here up to two thirds of the height of the plant. So we'll actually end up burying the plant under soil to this level, and this will allow for quick rooting and faster growth. And now we're ready to plant. I'm gonna remove my tomato out of the soil. If it's gotten a little root bound, you can tussle the roots at this point to kind of free them up. Make sure you don't lose your planting tag. This is a Sasha's Altai, a nice Russian heirloom variety. And I'm going to drop the plant into the hole. It looks like I measured it kind of perfectly here because the bottom set of leaves is right above soil level. I like to take a mixture of our native garden soil with some of the Gardener and Bloom Organics planting mix. It's got a really nice nutrient balance and it allows the plant to start absorbing some of those fertilizers uh, a lot quicker and retain a lot more water right out the bat. So I've got a mixture here in the back of the skater. You can use a wheelbarrow, of course, or a tub truck. And I'm just gonna take this mixture, it's about 50-50, and just backfill my tomato bucket. My final step, now that the tomato's planted, I like to take some of the Gardener and Bloom Harvested Cream and just take a nice handful of it as a top dressing around the plant. This is a nutrient-rich, mulchy type compost that really helps to feed the plant throughout the season and does a wonderful job retaining moisture. So sometimes when you buy your plants from the nursery, they will have flowers already on them and even fruit. You don't want to keep them on there. Uh, my saying is you want to let your plant grow up a little bit before it's ready to have children. So if you see flowers on your young plant, pl pluck them off. And if you see fruit, you also pluck them off. Of course, all those suckers can come off too. Now, a big question is how long do you keep on plucking those flowers? 
I like to wait till my plants are at least knee high before I let them start redirecting their energy into fruiting and away from rooting. That assures that the plant's going to have plenty of energy to get well established before it tries to reproduce. So as you can see, in just a few simple steps, you can be on your way to growing some of your best organic tomatoes ever. Thank you for joining us here at White Raven Farm. I'm Lindsay from the North End Organic Nursery, and for more information about growing tomatoes here in the Treasure Valley, visit our friends at the Tomato Independence Project. You can find them at treasurevalleyfoodcoalition.org. Have a great day.